Hi, I'm Deborah from Kiss My Wonder Woman. Hi, Deborah. And we are being filmed by HeartGaming.com. Hi. <laughs> um, and I just wanted to add. Oh, and this is. Captain I'm Kelly Sue DeConnick. I write Captain Marvel <laughs> um, and Avengers Assemble for Marvel Comics, and um, Pretty Deadly uh, is coming out from Image Comics on Wednesday. I don't know when you're seeing this, but on Wednesday, October 23rd, that's going to happen. Yay. I'm really nervous. Be kind. With the Marvel movie universe and the DC movie universe, there seems to be a little bit of a disconnect. It's not that Marvel's actually done a female lead movie, but it seems like it's a heck of a lot more possible. And I was wondering if you feel like there is a disconnect between the Marvel uh, female characters and the DC female characters. Is there anything to the, no, they're actually just very different? You know, I, I don't feel like I am well-schooled enough to answer that properly because um, it is part of my job to keep up on the Marvel Universe. Yeah. Um, uh, and while I do read some DC comics, uh, I, I, I don't work in the DC Universe. Yeah. I don't have to keep up on all of them and I'll have a limited amount of time yes. and monies. <laughs> And um, so that is not where I'm focused. Yeah. Um, my notion, my sort of uh, gestalt understanding of how things are in the DC universe right now is that the DC universe has gone kind of dark. Um, and uh, I don't know how that relates to gender, mm -hmm. um, but when I was growing up, the difference was easily characterized as... Um, um, I'm, my husband actually was, is the, the one who has this theory about the whys of, of it. Um, and you know, it's a theory. But um, the DC writers uh, were a lot of, um, uh, the, the, the early DC writers were a lot of uh, sci-fi guys, mm -hmm. um, uh, sci-fi and fantasy guys that were coming over to comics. And, um, and at the same time, uh, Marvel had its roots um, more in, in guys that kind of couldn't get work anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And so the two universes were, DC was a loftier universe where, you know, the heroes were uh, yeah. uh, above us. Um, and, uh, and Marvel heroes, um, you know, lived in our neighborhoods and had bills to pay. And um, so it was, it was a kind of, um, Th those we uh, what we sort of aspire to gods and, and yeah. so forth and those that are kind of down here with us dealing with the, t the struggles of, of day to day life that isn't a judgment um, uh, that doesn't suggest that one is better than the other and I actually grew up reading um, DC comics I didn't read Marvel until I was an adult hmm. I mean I had, I had a basic understanding of it I watched uh, uh, the you know the Hulk the Incredible Hulk TV show I loved when I was a kid yep and, um, <laughs> and the Widow oh, Wonder Woman TV show Oh, show. oh, it was DC. Never mind. Um, but uh, <laughs> but yeah. So um, these days, I'm not sure I could characterize it in that way. My um, my understanding of of the breakdown between the two film universes is, is similar. That the yeah. the, the the Marvel um, films uh, are are lighter. Um, uh, and a bit brighter, and the, the DC films are uh, a bit darker. Uh, and, and I think that the challenge of a superhero film, which is going to carry a lot of weight coming from someone who doesn't actually work in films or really go see all that many of them, so this is super important that I opine on this, guys. Um, it is. Uh, yeah. Is yeah. that um, disaster fatigue. The last... Um, 40 minutes of Man of Steel. We are so assaulted with now. Now that we have the the effects that we can do, we can destroy the city. Mm -hmm. We just keep destroying the cities. <laughs> and the problem, to, in in my estimation, is that um, after a point, you just start to feel like you're looking over someone's shoulder while they're playing a video game. There's no real stakes. Who cares? Yeah. Um, and you know what is not fun? Looking over someone else's shoulder while they're playing a video game. Um, it, there's, 
so I, I think the challenge, and I, and I actually think the Avengers film did this quite well. I think the challenge is to have the stakes be large, but the moments be small. Yeah. Um, and the, 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 the relationships have to be real, and we have to come out with a, a superheroes at their core should have, to my way of thinking, a message of hope. Um, I think that's, I think that is what they're about. I think that's how they function in our lizard brain, yeah. um, is there should be a message of hope. And you have to come out of these disasters feeling uh, hopeful and triumphant, you know? Yeah, so. definitely. Um, now, this one is more specifically about your writing experiences. I okay. know you've written across a lot of different types of comics. Mm -hmm. You've done manga, you've done indies, you've done superheroes. Is there a difference in the editorial expectation of female characters over the different types of comics? That would be hard to say because I have not had much of an editorial experience outside of superhero comics. Huh. Because, um, okay, so if you think about manga, yeah. I, I, I'm not making any story choices in manga, That's true. really. Um, I am writing the adaptation, so right. I, I'm, those characters are created. My, my job is to get them across in a, in a way that's fluid um, and that is, uh, um, th that honors the, what, what, what I figure to be the intent of the original author. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I, I always say in manga adaptations, if I'm doing my job well, my hand is invisible. Right. Um, you shouldn't be able to see my style. And it's probably unlikely that I've accomplished that, but ideally that would be, um, uh, that would be how it works. Um, and then, um, you know, I've done some very small anthology pieces um, that were non-superhero stuff, but um, with most of them didn't have um, an editorial hand in the in the story formation. It, the editor was, you know, dealing with putting together a large anthology, mm -hmm. so it was mostly like deadline wrangling yeah. and, and whatnot. Um, so, uh, um, so it's, it's really hard for me to think of, the only time I can think of having an editorial experience outside of superhero comics um, would be Ian working with Ian Brill at Boom on my CBGB story. Yeah. So I have all of 14 pages uh, mm -hmm. to, to talk about there. 14, 11, something like that. It was a short, it, it was a short story. Um, uh, and Ian's, the bulk of what Ian did there was uh, keep me on the book when I quit three times. <laughs> so, oh, wow. Okay, then. <laughs> I, just, I just kept feeling like, like, I don't have a story here. I don't have a story. And he was like, no, I really think you have a story. I really want you to have another go at it. And I was like, oh, man. And it, it ended up being a piece that I'm super, super proud of. Um, so I'm really <laughs> glad he did that. But um, yeah, I wish I had a good answer to give you, but like, no, I okay. have an editor on Pretty Deadly, um, but because I own Pretty Deadly uh, with Emma Rios, my partner, yeah. she and I uh, co-created this thing from the ground up. And our editor works for us. Like she gets oh, her paycheck okay, from then. us. Yeah. You know, um, uh, it's a little bit of a different. Um, so Sigrid is wonderful, and and you know she'll say, I don't think this is clear, or uh, do you want me to do this research for you, or but you know, mostly Sigrid's there to to, to crack the whip and be like, you guys, we need pages. You know. <laughs> um, uh, and and if she were to say, I don't think this works, I would say, well, I do. So you know, um, which is which is both the the um, the blessing and the curse of the like, creator of the yeah. comic is you're the boss. Keep your ego in check because you're the boss. <laughs> so um, anyway, hopefully, if she said I don't think this works, I would give it some good thought uh, uh, and. 
Because <laughs> she is a smart reader. Um, no, I actually wanted to ask, like, of all the stuff you've written, what are you most proud of? Not necessarily what's been the most successful, but what brings you most joy as a person? Um, I, I am, I have, I can find things to be proud of in almost all of my work. Um, I can also find things to plug my ears and hope never to think about again mm -hmm. um, in almost all of my work. But um, um, I think the tightest plotting I've ever done, which in plotting is not my strong point, plotting and pacing, <laughs> you know, two of the three major character and dialogue, I, I, I am one of the best. Mm -hmm. Plotting and pacing, super <laughs> crazy important tools in your toolbox really need to work on them both. Um, uh, but uh, my, um, the, probably my most tightly plotted story is a, is a short story for Marvel called um, Girls Night In. Um, like six people read it. Um, I and, will admit I haven't. Yeah, um, and I did it with um, uh, Brad Walker, I think is oh, his yeah. name. He's a, a really talented guy. Um, and uh, it's, the three, at the time there were three Avengers teams and each one kind of had a lady liaison. Um, so there was Anita Hill, Anita Hill, um, Victoria Hand, and uh, um, Agent Carter. Mm -hmm. And so it was a meeting between the three of them oh. uh, at uh, Avengers Tower where all the, the Avengers are out and the tower gets attacked. Um, and so the three of them have to, to kind of step up fight the good fight and um that's awesome yeah and it it it's well paced it's funny um it has i think a a, a clever wrap up a super like uh, if i could just do that over six issues that'd be great <laughs> um i'm really proud of uh helen's letter in the first captain marvel issue yeah um I'm really proud of, of the character of Sandra Muffaletto from uh, Osborne Evil Incarcerated. Um, I thought she was really complex and real and interesting. Um, I felt like I knew her. Yeah. Um, so there's stuff. There's stuff. There's also, you know, books that I've like. I killed a, <laughs> killed a dog once. I'm not happy about that. Oh. Um, that was in a. Um, Oh, what was that book called? Um, I think it was called Steve Rogers and the Secret Avengers, and it's a team up between uh, Black Widow and uh, and Agent Thirteen, and uh, and uh, like the the cheapest, laziest thing that you can do to show how bad a bad character is is to have them threaten a child or an animal. And, Though occasionally it's cheap not to kill the dog, like in War of the Roses, with Kathleen Turner, they had to put a scene of the dog being alive in after the test audience saw a scene where they implied that they killed the dog and walked out. Yeah. We don't like that. We do not enjoy the killing of the animals. That's it's, not a good thing. It's oddly specific, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I think that there's, I mean, we, so, like, as, as, enjoyers of, of, of uh, as consumers of culture, yeah. you know, I think that there is a, a there is this line with um, with innocence, yeah. you know, and, and, and children and animals are deemed to be innocents, and it's okay um, uh, to punish those with full agency, but, you know, but we don't, like, yeah. like kids and animals can't be wrong, they can't. That is true. You know, so. And I think, I mean, do you think that relates to what you were saying earlier about superheroes as agents of hope? Um, sure. I, I, mean, I, th I think that's. I, I think that is a really dark choice when you. Um, I mean, I, it's not that I don't think that you could write a story about the death of a child or a, a story where an animal was was hurt or tortured and and, and not have. You know, good work could be done with those. I think good work could be done about anything, really. But I don't know that 
superhero comics are the place for that, you know? I yeah. Don't, I don't think that that's, at least it's not where I go for it, you know? Like, um, um, you know, I don't want to see the lovely bones set in the Marvel Universe, you know? Very intense. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much for talking to me. You're very welcome. <laughs>